This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this uh, lecture, I'm going to look at the chapter of the free lecture notes on markups and margins, and to explain what we mean by markups and margins, uh, and uh, the sort of questions you can be asked. Um, I'll look at the examples. So first of all, example one. Uh, a. Yelena has a cost of goods sold of 20,000 and applies a markup of 20%. Uh, well, what we mean by a markup, a markup, it's the profit as a percent of cost. So what she's doing, everything she sells, she's going to add 20% profit to the cost. And so since the cost of goods sold was 20,000, she'll add on a profit, the markup 20% of cost, uh, 4,000, and therefore, the sales will be 24,000. It's a nice and easy. If we know what the cost is of what we're selling, uh, if we know the percentage markup, we simply add on here 20% of cost and there are your sales. Uh, to make it a bit more fun, they can argue effectively work backwards. Look at example 1b. In 1B, Karen has sales of 50,000. She applies a markup of 25%, and here we want to know what the cost was. And remember, this markup, the profit's going to be 25% of the cost, but we don't know what the cost is. All we know is what she sold. Well, you can get the same answer several ways. I don't know, it's whichever way you find easier. But the point is, surely, if the cost is x, I'm going to use a bit of algebra, you don't need to, it's entirely up to you how you go about it, but if the cost is x, uh, the profit we're going to add on is 25% or 0.25 of x. It's a markup, it's 25% of cost, and therefore the sales 1x plus 0.25 of x is 1.25x. And we know what the sales are. The sales are 50,000. And so uh, the cost of, uh, of goods sold, or x, divide both sides by 1.25. 50,000 divided by 1.25 is... Forty thousand, and of course it checks. Although don't waste time in the exam checking, you must make sure you're confident. Uh, but if the cost is forty thousand, uh, the markup, the profit, twenty-five percent of forty thousand is ten thousand. It does indeed give us sales of fifty. Uh, now say again how you do it when you're going backwards is up to you. Um, and it is one of those things where some people find this terribly obvious and can't understand why anybody has a problem. Other people do find this tricky and can't understand why anyone can find it easy. Another way you can do it, you see, the same thing, but if you don't like using X's, you could say, well, forget this, the actual figures for the moment, you could say for every hundred cost, we're going to add on a profit, a markup of 25%. And the sales will therefore be 125. So for every 100 cost, sales will be 125. Or putting it the other way around, for every 125 sales, the cost will be 100. So the cost 
will always be 100 out of 125 of the sales. And if the sales are 50,000, well, 100 divided by 125 40,000. So practicing whether you find it easy or hard, again, and I've shown you two ways of uh, getting the figure. Whichever method you find easiest, nobody cares how you do it as long as obviously you get the right answer. All right, well, that's what a markup is. It's where the, 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 it's a profit expressed as a percent of the cost, but similar but different the profit margin and the margin uh, this time margin is the profit but instead of being a percent of cost it's a percent of the selling price and so look at example two now two examples there first of all a Peter has sales of 120,000. His gross profit, now that's another way you can express it, gross profit is 20%, is another way of saying the margin is 20%. If the margin is 20%, what is the cost of goods sold? We'll find the sales, 120,000. The margin, 20% of sales, 24,000. And so if they're selling at 120 and the profit is 24, the cost of the goods sold must have been 96. So again, apart from terminology, that I think is nice and easy, but make sure you're clear about the difference. Markup is a percent of cost, margin or gross profit percentage is a percentage of selling price. Uh, but again, they can uh, have you apply that, if you understand me, backwards. Look at B. Paul has a cost of goods sold of 45,000. The gross profit margin is 25%. What is the sales? And so, uh, a bit like we had last time, it's going backwards. The profit is 25% of sales, but we don't know what the sales are. That's what we're trying to find out. Well, again, I'll do it both ways, you know, using X's and not using X's. If we use a little bit of algebra, if the sales are X, the margin, the profit, uh, will be 25% of X or 0.25 of X. And therefore the cost, the sales less the profit, 1x minus 0.25x is 0.75x. We know what the cost is, it's equal to 45,000. And so x, 45,000 divided by 0 0.75, uh, which is the sales, remember. Uh, 60,000. And again, although don't waste time checking in the exam, you won't have time, it's wasting time, but it does check because if the sales are 60,000, the profit, 25% of 60,000 is 15,000. And so again, the cost must have been 45,000. If you don't like using X's, then say, OK, for every 100 sales, the profit, there's a margin 25% of sales, which is 25, the cost would be 75. And therefore, for every 75 cost, the sales will be 100. So the sales will always be a hundred for every 75 of the cost. Cost is 45,000. 
at 100 divided by 75. That was 45,000. 60,000. So entirely up to you. Learn the words, then it's just practice. You know, it's when you're going fast, you make silly mistakes, so obviously do practice. Uh, finally, though, without um, needing to learn anymore, they can make the question a little bit more exciting. So look at example three. Uh, we're told that the sales are 120,000. We're told what the opening inventory was, 30,000. We're told what the purchases were, 90. Uh, and we're told what the closing inventory is, 12,000. However, there's been a fire and some of the inventory had been destroyed. So the 12,000 closing inventory is what's left after the fire. And they want to know how much, what was the cost of the inventory that was destroyed? We've only got 12,000 left at the end. Uh, but maybe, ooh, there had been another 3,000, but that had been destroyed in the fire. They want to know how much inventory was destroyed in the fire. And the one bit of extra information we know, we know there's a markup of 20%. Well, let's have a go. As always, how you get the figures your choice, but I always found the easiest is this. I write up a little trading account. We know that the cost of goods sold, do we not know? It's always the sales less the cost of sales. Well, we know what the sales are. The sales are 120,000. And the cost of sales, it's always the opening inventory plus the purchases minus the closing inventory. Well, I know what the opening inventory was, it was 30,000. We know what the purchases were, 90. So, so far, 120. We subtract the closing inventory, and that gives us the cost of sales, and that gives us the profit, the gross profit. Now, I've left the inventory blank. Because although it tells us the closing inventory was 12,000, I want to find out what should the inventory have been if there hadn't have been a fire? You know, maybe the inventory should have been 15,000. If it's only 12, it means the difference is what was lost in the fire. So how can I work out what the closing inventory should have been? Well, we know the markup. We know the markup is 20%, so we can work out what the gross profit and the cost of sales should have been. It was a markup, so for every $100 cost, uh, we'd have been adding on the markup, the profit, 20%, 20. The sales would be 120, or use X's if you want. But it means for every 120 sales, the cost should have been 100. The cost is always going to be 100 out of 120 of whatever the sales were. Well, I know what the sales were. They were 120,000. And so what must the cost have been? The cost must have been 10,000. Let's go back and fill that in. Uh, sorry, 100 over 20, 120, it's 100,000, I missed a zero. The cost must have been 100,000. So let's fill it in. If the cost was 100,000, the profit, 20,000. It does work, does it not? Uh, because uh, the markup, the profit, is 20% of the cost. 
And therefore, what should the closing inventory have been? If there hadn't have been a fire, the closing inventory would have been the missing figure of 20,000. And so I immediately know how much was lost in the fire. You see, it should have been 120 if there had been no fire. Uh, what was it? The question tells us it was only 12,000. And so lost in the fire. 20,000 is what it should have been. 12,000 is all that was left. And so lost in the fire was inventory worth 8,000, or a cost of 8,000. Uh, incidentally, I mean, there's the answer to the question. So, you know, in the exam, don't waste time. Uh, but um, just one other thing. The inventory, of course, was only 12,000. Uh, uh, the actual profit w turned out to be lower. However, we would still leave the trading account like that. Otherwise, it distorts things. You see, the cost of what we actually sold, forget the fire for the minute, the cost of what we sold must have been 100. We sold it for 120. The gross profit is 20. However, losing stuff in a fire does cost us money, obviously. The final profit's going to be lower. But we'd show that separately. Under expenses, along with all the other expenses as normal, rent, electricity, etc., you'd have a loss from fire. Eight thousand. And if there were no other expenses, the final profit would end up only being twelve. Because clearly, the more inventory you lose, it is costing money, it is giving less profit. Uh, but we do show it like that, uh, because we need to show what the cost was of what we actually sold, the profit on what we actually sold, the loss, 8,000. Uh, and of course, on the statement of financial position, we'd show the inventory as 20 less 8, we would show the actual inventory at 12,000. However, that's a minor point. Um, in most questions, all we're concerned about uh, is what was the loss. Work out what the inventory should have been using your markup or your margin, whichever you give. Uh, compare with what the inventory actually was, the difference is what we lost.